we will be doing the basics of accounting. What is accounting? Accounting is the language of the business. It is the means of communicating the financial statements to the end users of the business. The AICPA defines accounting as the art of recording, classifying, summarizing, interpretation and communication. The art of recording is recording all the transactions into records in an orderly manner. The art of classifying is grouping the items of similar nature in ledgers. The art of summarizing is presentation of the financial statements to the end users in the form of the balance sheet, the statement of profit and loss or the cash flow statements. The art of interpretation is analyzing the financial statements in the form of ratio analysis, comparative statements, etc. And the art of communication is communicating the financial statements to the end users to make meaningful judgments on the financial position of the organization. However, accounting has few drawbacks. The items of non-monetary nature cannot be recorded in the books of accounts. The fixed assets are valued at their original cost according to the traditional approach and this may not be realistic. The value of money is not stable and therefore the accounting values may be inaccurate according to the traditional approach. The accounting values are based on estimates and these estimates may be inaccurate. Finally, accounting can be manipulative or biased. I will now explain the generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP. The generally acceptable accounting principles are rules and regulations that have been laid down by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India for the companies to follow during the preparation of their financial statements. The gap has been divided into two broad categories, the accounting concepts and the accounting conventions. We will now look into the accounting concepts. The first accounting concept is the business entity concept. The business entity concept states that the owner and the business are two separate units. In the sense, the assets and liabilities of the owner are separate from the assets and liabilities of the business. For example, when I start a company, I invest my money into the company. However, the company is obligated to repay this amount to me in the form of dividends when the company earns profits. Moving on. The money measurement concept. The money measurement concept states that only the transactions which can be measured in monetary terms are to be recorded in the books of accounts. The cost concept. The cost concept states that all transactions are to be recorded at the cost of acquisition. For example, the company is to record all their assets at the purchase cost of the asset. The going concern concept. The going concern concept states that the business has infinite duration. The accounting period concept. The accounting period concept states that the books of accounts are to be maintained for a period of one year. This period could start from the 1st of January and end on the 31st of December or from 1st of April and end on the 31st of March. The profit and loss is ascertained at the end of this period. The matching concept. The matching concept states that all expenses incurred during a particular period should be matched with the revenues earned during that period. Therefore, all assets of a period are matched with the liabilities of that period. The dual aspect concept. The dual aspect concept states that every transaction has two aspects, the receiving aspect and the giving aspect. The accounting equation, which is assets is equal to capital plus liability is derived from this concept. The realization concept. The realization concept states that revenues are to be recognized on the date on which they are earned. That is on the date on which the risks and rewards pertaining to the goods and services are transferred to the customer 
and not on the date on which the cash is actually received. The accrual concept. The accrual concept states that all expenses which are due to be paid and all incomes which are due to be received are to be recorded in the current period. The objective evidence concept. The objective evidence concept states that for all material transactions, documentary evidence should exist. We will now look into the accounting conventions. The first accounting convention is the Convention of Materiality. The Convention of Materiality states that only material items and transactions are to be recorded in the books of accounts. If the item or transaction is in the position to influence the decisions taken by the end users on the financial positions of the organization, then such items and transactions will be considered to be material for the organization. The next accounting convention is the Convention of Conservatism or Prudence. This convention states that all anticipated losses are to be recognized while all anticipated or unrealized gains are to be ignored. The Convention of Consistency. The Convention of Consistency states that all accounting policies that have been adopted by the organization should remain consistent or should remain unchanged from one accounting period to another. The Convention of Full Disclosure. The Convention of Full Disclosure states that all material information pertaining to the financial statements should be disclosed in the books of accounts of the company. The accounting concepts are rules and regulations which are to be followed by the company during the preparation of the financial statements. And the accounting conventions are guidelines which are prescribed. So just like how we have certain principles and formulas that help us understand any subject, we have certain principles and rules that help us in the presentation of the financial information to the end users. So these principles and rules are commonly called accounting standards. The accounting standards that we follow in India were issued by the ICAI, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, in the year 1979. We've already heard that accounting is a language and we all know that different countries have their own language just like that different countries had their own accounting standards. But then when globalization started and Indian companies started going abroad and foreign companies started coming to India, it was difficult to understand the financial information of different countries because of the different accounting standards they followed. So they decided that we needed a global language that would help us in the understanding and comparison of financial information. So to solve this, an independent body called the IASB was formed in 2001 in UK. So the IASB decided that we needed a global accounting standard that would help us in the communication and understanding. And in response to this, they issued the IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards. So once the IFRS were issued, they gave every country two options, either to, either to completely adopt the IFRS or take the route of convergence. So when it came to India, they adopted to take the route of convergence. What this meant was that the, India took the newly issued IFRS and the already existing accounting standards and combined both of them to form the IND-AS or the Indian Accounting Standards. So once the Indian Accounting Standards were formed, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs decided to start with a voluntary adoption and then followed by a face-by-face -face adoption. Starting from 1st April 2015, any company could voluntarily adopt the Indian accounting standard, but once it was adopted, they couldn't go back. The face-by-face -face adoption consisted of, consisted of four phases, starting on 1st April 2016. The first phase required all listed and unlisted companies with a net worth of greater than or equal to 500 crores to mandatorily adopt the Indian accounting standards. In order to understand the net worth of the company, they had to look into the previous financial accounting information for the past three years. So then the phase two started on 1st April 2017 and required every listed company, that is a company registered on the stock exchange or in the process of being registered on the stock exchange, 
and which had a net worth of more than 250 crores but less than 500 crores to adopt the Indian accounting standards. The third phase started on 1st April 2018 and required all the banks, insurance and NBFCs, that is the non-banking financial companies which had a net worth of more than 500 crores to adopt the Indian accounting standards. And your final and fourth phase required all NBFCs which had a net worth of more than 250 crores but less than 500 crores to adopt Indian accounting standards. We will now look into some of the important accounting terminologies. The accounting transactions. The accounting transactions are business events which can influence the financial position of the organization and hence are to be recorded in the books of accounts. All transactions are events. Business events. Business events are occurrences in the business scenario like placing an order by the customer, death of a partner or an admission of a partner into the firm, etc. which are not recorded in the books of accounts. The accounting events. Accounting events are consequences of accounting transactions. For example, the value of the closing stock or the profits earned by the business. Cash transactions. Cash transactions are those transactions which involve the exchange of cash between two parties. For example, purchase of goods of, for cash or sale of goods for cash. Credit transactions. Credit transactions are those transactions which do not involve the exchange of cash between the parties. For example, sale of goods on credit. Capital. Capital is the amount that has been invested by the owner into the organization, while the equity is equal to the capital plus any profits earned by the organizations plus the reserves and surpluses minus any losses. The drawings. Drawings is equal to the value of goods or the amount of cash which is withdrawn by the owner from the organization for personal use. The liabilities. Liabilities is the amount that the organization owes to the outsiders. It is an obligation which is to be fulfilled. Assets. Assets are valuable resources that are controlled by the business. These can be measured in monetary terms. Current assets. Current assets are those assets which are expected to be converted into cash within one operating cycle or within a year. Non-current assets. Non-current assets are those assets which are expected to remain in the organization for a period more than a year or more than one operating cycle. Tangible assets. Tangible assets are those assets which are present in the physical form. For example, inventory, furniture, machinery, etc. Intangible assets. Intangible assets are those assets which do not have a physical form. For example, the patent rights, copyrights, etc. So to continue with the important terminologies, the next we have debtor. So debtor is any party who owes the company money and is usually associated with the sale of goods and services. For example, when we sell goods to Mr. Ravi on credit, Mr. Ravi becomes a debtor because he, has, he is yet to pay us the money. And next we have creditor. So creditor is any party that the company owes money to and is usually associated with purchases. So when we purchase goods or services from Mr. Kumar and we are yet to pay Mr. Kumar, Mr. Kumar is a creditor to the company. So the next terminology that we have is expense. So expense is any cost incurred in the production, administration and distribution of goods and services. Then the next we have revenue. Revenue is any income generated from the normal operating activities of the company. The main source of revenue for the company is the sale of goods and services. Trade discount is the discount offered by the seller on the listed price on the goods and services. An important thing to note about trade discount is, is that it's never recorded in the books of accounts. 
So next we have cash discount. Cash discount is the discount given for the prompt payment of goods and services and cash discount is usually recorded in the books of accounts. Purchase. So purchase is buying of any goods and services for the purpose of resale or for the purpose of being used in the manufacturing process. Sale. Sale is any income generated by selling goods and services to a third party. So next we have capital transactions. So capital transactions are usually transactions that are non-recurring and long-term in nature. Usually we consider any transaction that doesn't happen every year to be a capital transaction. So capital transactions are transactions that are non-recurring and usually long-term in nature. And these are usually transactions that do not happen every year, such as the purchase of machinery or the sale of building. And finally, we have revenue transactions. These are transactions that are recurring and short-term in nature, and these are usually transactions that happen every year. For example, we have salary paid or interest received. 